what we do is we go into the file, get photos for camera, or the icon that we have there. Uh, does, do we want to set this to be uh, automatically opened? I'd say no. I actually, I don't like anything automatically doing anything. I'd like to tell it when to do things. Um, so in a second, hopefully, we have this popping up. This dialog box allows us to very easily get a bunch of files from one location and move them to another, basically. So where are we going to get our files from and where are we going to move them to is decided right here and right here. Right? Where are our pictures coming from? Well, oops. where are our pictures coming from? What drive? Um, this is why you want to name your drives, right? And is it coming from my work drive? No, it's coming from no name. What's no name? I don't know. Well, that must be my memory card for my camera, right? Could be called entitled. Um, I hit uh, that selection in this menu, and uh, Bridge automatically sort of indexes everything on that drive. This is a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is, in a moment, it's going to give me all the thumbnails of everything on the drive. The bad thing is, it takes a moment here, right? How many pictures did I shoot? Jeez, right? Um, so now, it's showing me, oh, look, there's pictures here available. Um, where do you want to put them? Well, I'll choose a place when I figure out which pictures I'm actually bringing in. I know that I've shot a lot of pictures. They're not all going into one location in my work, in my work drive, right? I'm going to put them in different folders. So. In order to choose picture by picture, not just import everything on the memory card, you need to open the advanced dialog. The advanced dialog is opened by clicking this button right here. And what does the advanced dialog do? It opens up this index of thumbnails that I said was being generated a moment ago. So here, you can see that each of them has a checkbox. By default, they're all checked. Well, whatever we decide to do is going to be applied to the checked pictures. I'd like to uncheck all of them to begin, actually. I'm going to click uncheck all. Okay, the check marks are gone. So now maybe I want to start importing some pictures, right? So I'm like, oh, right, here's about six pictures that are the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and select these six pictures. I'm going to click on the first picture, hold, hold down shift, click on the last picture in that group, you can see that it's a contiguous selection. Right? Once I have them um, selected, I'm going to check one of them. And that check mark will appear across all the selected images. Right? So I'm just going to check one of these. And the check is now in all six. Dig? Okay. Now, I haven't done anything to the pictures Right? All I've done is sort of choose the pictures that I'm going to do something to. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get these pictures, and now what am I going to do with them? I'm going to save them where? Well, I haven't chosen a location. By default, by default, by default, your pictures will be saved to your pictures folder of your computer's hard drive. Don't do that. Don't do that. Save your pictures to your work folder. We've already backed up our pictures to our backup drive. Now we're going to save our pictures to our work folder. So find your work folder. My work folder is on my work drive, right? And now I have Digital Image Bank 2014. This is, this, what I'm about to put in here looks like, to me, something that doesn't fit into any of these folders, right? Assignment 1, Assignment 2, Family and Friends. No, this is really like art openings. Okay, I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to go ahead and open that folder. Um, here, this choose location right now doesn't give me a great amount of information, unfortunately. Right? It just says one subfolder. Ah, what does that mean? I always like to click back on choose and just double check to make sure that that's what I intended. Right? It's a little annoying. It's part of using this tool that was created by somebody, and people don't always make everything perfect. Okay, so now I know the location I'm saving to, to art opening. Um, do I want to create a subfolder? No, I don't. I'm going to say no subfolder. There's a lot of options here, right? Rename files. Wow, wait, wait, we were just talking about batch renaming files. I could do that now on the import command, right? 
You don't have to. You know how to do it once you've already imported your pictures, but now you have another way of renaming your files. So what we're going to do is click on Do Not Rename Files. Click on Do Not Rename Files. Click on Advanced Rename all the way at the bottom. And here we have this dialog box that's somewhat similar to what we were dealing with with that batch rename function. So I'm going to remove some of these options. I don't need um, anything besides maybe two uh, parameters, right? We want our text that we're typing, and then we want our file name, right? Because our file names are already unique. Each file is already a unique file name. We're going to add something that's similar. So I'm going to say up here I'm going to do uh, this was the faculty show. Uh, QC fall 2014. Spring, thank you. It is spring. Um, I got to tell you, the more, the longer your file names, the easier they're going to uh, be to find. The more, the more words you put in your file names, the easier they're going to be able to find through many different uh, techniques. So, spring, absolutely. So, I have text up there. Um, this is interesting. There's a text and it's an underscore. Notice how that puts an underscore in. Underscores and spaces in your file name make them easier to read. Include them. Let me show you something funny. I'm going to change this text into current file name, right? That's what I want. Right? And if you look, current file name, new file name, down at this bottom section, we have the current file name that I'm retaining after my new file name. But look at that name jammed up one against the other, right? Um, Q, it's faculty show QC Spring 2014 IMG. That's a little hard to read. I'm, I'm of the opinion that if you put a space after whatever text you've typed in or an underscore, it makes it so much better. It's worth it. Add that extra space after your text field. It's right there. I just put a space after the four in 2014. Makes it very legible. Um, it's like being able to speed read a column in the newspaper instead of having to go from line to line to line. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like you're it able to parse efficient. things yeah. um, visually much easier. Okay. So you hit OK here. Um, does it do anything? No, I haven't done anything to my picture. I'm just setting up all these save parameters. Is it worth it for four, six pictures? You know. Um, that's it, though. That's all we need to do. Uh, I'm going to hit Get Media which is a new button down there. It's basically like, okay, or whatever. Just go ahead and hit Get Media, right? And now I'm saving those pictures from my thumb, uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, from my camera's memory card to my work drive. And now it's opening up that folder in Bridge that I created with the pictures in it. 